<laughs> and that's how we do it. That's, that's why he's clap boy. Right? right? It's not just, uh, well, yeah, it's, he doesn't have the clap, so he says. But <laughs> that's how we start up our show every day. Today, what episode are we? Uh, 32, 32. 32. 32. Fucking eight. So today we have my man, one of my greatest friends and students and teachers and all around good dude, Brandon Kelly Jr. Thanks for coming, pal. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We, uh, I guess, well, we might as well just jump right into it. For me, but it's the obvious is like we drove down to New York and broke some guys' legs two weeks ago. We did, yeah. Or it was, three weeks it was ago. a good time. You, you came, you drove down and picked me up from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. Really <laughs> Couldn't yeah. afford an Uber and you came down and saved the day, so it was good. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, fantastic adventure. Uh, you know what? I'll just l- run with it, man. How did you, what made you, like, how'd you, you got back in the ring? Yeah, like, you know, it was a long time coming. Like, obviously, you know, the the last fight that we had, yeah. um, I took a knockout. And that was after a run of, like, I think 10 fights that were just awesome went my way. And then I took a knockout in my last fight before taking this one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, talking to you, we, I took a lot of time off to, to rest my head and, you know, make sure I recovered properly and didn't rush back into striking. And, and, you know, I think it was, what, three, four years. And I just focused on really getting my jiu-jitsu game up. And, you know, uh, the timing came and I kind of got that fire back. And, you know, after you stepped back in there and kind of led the way for all of us, you're like, dude, I don't know why you guys uh, like Rob and them aren't getting back in there. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll get back in there one day. And, you know, you really led the way for us. And I'm like, man, if Brockman can do it with having a broken neck and, <laughs> and getting back in there and fighting a, <clears throat> fighting a man in Thailand, then I can do it. And I remember when I told you. And you're like, dude, you're next. You got to get your shit together. And I'm like, I'll do it. And I wanted to be a man of my word and kind of lead it for everybody else. I said, oh, yeah, I'll get back in there. I'll, I'll do it. I'm like, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. We made the plan in Thailand after your fight. And we picked a fight and we did it. Yeah, it went well. Uh, yeah, man. It, you know, I also, you know, uh, getting a ticket. Knock- I haven't been knocked out like in competition, but I've been down a couple of times. And dude, it's a uh, people see it on television like it's not a fucking big deal like dude that shit will change your life man you gotta really after stuff like that happens to you you really gotta assess like what you want to do yeah it was was one of those things too like i wanted to like you you go through all those emotions like your first fight back after or after taking a knockout like am i am i still gonna be the same fighter is my jaw gonna be suspect yeah and you know how 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 am i gonna how am i gonna act getting in there and you're overcoming a lot too because like you know, your, your last fight, you went to sleep in front of everybody, yeah. you know, and I'm yeah. stepping in there with a guy who I knew was game, um, you know, because I watched his last fight when it got set up. I think I watched him fight last October, mm-hmm. and um, he fought uh, a friend of mine. His name's Mong Fu. He owns a gym in, in New York, and he put, put him into the clinch, and he was clinch, clinch, clinch. Need him in the arms because he was blocking like this, which is a big no-no. Um, ended up breaking his arms, and I'm like... That guy had no clinch. I'm like, I got clinch. I could beat that guy. Yeah. And, you know, took that fight. But you still go through all those nerves getting in there of like, you know, there's, you, there's, you, got, you got your whole team there. My dad's there. My mom showed up, you know, and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. You know? No, there's, a, and there, there is a lot to it. Like you got, you feel like you got, you got to redeem yourself. You know what I mean? Like I said, all those people are watching it. You know what I mean? For you, like, yeah, you got switched off. That's scary shit. Like yeah. not, a, you know. You got to go and perform in front of these people, but yeah, you got to like, oh my, do I still fucking got it? You yeah. know what I mean? Because like, you know, you know that the shot that you did take that put you down, it wasn't that hard. No, it, it was, was just that, right and, and, and that's just, the thing. And it's like, it was also part of like learning um, throughout my career and, and learning as a fighter too about, um, you know, the fight I had, it was the same thing. I hit the guy with leg kick, leg kick, leg kick. I'm like, all right, he's not checking any leg kicks. Let's go for one more should have mixed it up and that was one of the things as a fighter so it was like you know set you know setting it up i made i made a simple mistake where yeah. i hit him with three hard leg kicks i'm like all right i'll get him with one more and obviously he saw it coming just stuck out a, a sloppy jab and it wasn't hard just touched me on the chin and i don't know if it was necessarily that that really not put me down but i def i went down and boom it was a head off the yeah, yeah, off yeah. The, the hard floor right yeah no you know emotionally that's it's, <clears throat> it's really difficult to come back from that and it, yeah. but it shows a lot about you as a person because like uh not a lot of people would bother. Yeah. Right. And, but at the same time, like, should you? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? There was, you know, at the end of the day, deep down, I know I was a fighter and, you know, there's, there's always a part of you that's like, 
you know, I don't want to go out as that being my last fight. Right? Who, the, who the fuck would? And nobody right? does. So I'm like, yeah, I wanted to do it for, you know, all the guys that are sitting there like listening or uh, not even necessarily listening, but like are thinking they're done or, you know, oh, I'm too old to get back in there. I'm too out of shape. Like, man, I was 200 pounds to start the year. Yeah. You're like, B, get your fucking shit together. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Um, you know, you can do it. Like anybody can do it if you set your goal to it. And I just, that's what I want to do. I wanted to also show my team um or, or guys that like come to me to be their coach like i will do everything that i ask of them i yeah. didn't want to be one of those coaches that's like oh you got to do this you got to do that or you know you got to go through the shark tank like i wanted to put myself back through that years later for the guys that haven't seen me yeah. fight to just be like man i you know i stuck to that diet um you know i was up every morning at 6 a.m i sacrificed work um to focus on training so i could be relatable to e even the guys that are coming to a higher level like you got to make an investment financially too into proper training and i did like we talked about it like you know i, I made a decision to be like i'm gonna not work for a month take this very seriously and just focus on this fight and like yeah lost a lot of money spent a lot of money doing what i had to do but it was part of you know being knowing that i would be successful come game time yeah right yeah yeah and it's a you know what is really important to uh yeah lead by example right but yeah. that's also like that's tricky too man because I want to, yeah, man, I want my, I want my students to see that I, I put in the same work I expect out of you. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you, you know, we're out there being older guys and whatever else, putting ourselves at risk. Is that like that, like the yeah. best example? Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. <clears throat> it's always say hard. It's always hard to stop no matter what age you are. But I just, for, especially for you and, um, What's the guy that no shows us all the time? Oh, Rob Reed. Rob Reed, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want you, I love you guys, and I don't want you guys to ever look back and be like, fuck, I should have done yeah. this. I should have done that. Maybe sometimes you're done and sometimes yeah. you're not. But me personally, I'm like, I wake up every day feeling I'm not done, mm -hmm. right? So I got to find other things to fill that void with. But like, I just wouldn't want you to walk away from it without getting your fucking hands dirty a couple oh, more man. times it's, you like, know the, the feeling like the fighters know the feeling it was, yeah. it was just amazing to you know go through all those motions just being in the pit being ready to go and yeah. just like oh the moment of clarity in the in the ring was just it was good yeah. to feel that drug again that was uh that was like i that was one of my favorite cornering things ever that whole journey yeah. right because like, what people don't understand you you took three weeks away from home and stayed in south carolina yeah. at someone else's gym as a yeah. you know training as a fighter and i you know, it was like for for me, it worked out fucking great. I'm like, yeah, I'll come, yeah. I'll come get you. I took, yeah, you know what? Like just growing as like a fighter from before, like e even the last fight we were talking about that uh, mm -hmm. where I was knocked out, like that was a fight that I shouldn't have taken. Uh, shouldn't have taken. A, it was up in weight, but it was, you know, the the not taking the fight for the wrong reason. Where this fight, I had the fire. I wanted to fight. Um, the fire was there. I was hungry. Whereas before, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, you know guys are always asking me the teams ask me oh we want to see you fight we want to see you fight so i would take a fight just to fight to keep everybody happy whereas like i wasn't necessarily as driven as i was for this one so i took the mental game and the mental approach really seriously yeah. for this one yeah because like now that, that's what i'm realizing as a coach now and reading that in my fighters is you know where are they at mentally and where's their mental focus you know do they have all this other stuff going on or are they opening a business on the side and they're distracted or is fighting all they want to do yeah, yeah right and for me that was like i'm like i'm gonna focus on this 110 percent because i knew you know this guy wanted he was gonna come and try to box and the game plan was to chop his like yeah it, it worked. worked worked out pretty good <laughs> i had like i was one of my greatest yeah cornering times just cornering yeah. your friends is good and just especially like i watch how yeah dude you lost 40 pounds yeah it was and good. Uh, and you got after it and I, when i drove down south and i walked in and saw you i was like holy fuck you didn't look like <laughs> the same person in the left three yeah. weeks ago when i could see the twinkle in your eye that you how bad you wanted it yeah i just remember walking out we were walking out i think it was just as you got in oh we we're about to walk out and you're like you're like looked at me and you're like yeah yeah i could see you can, and you're like yeah I I'm ready to get in a fucking fight. And I'm like, awesome, let's yeah. go. <laughs> and that was it. Like, I put up, some, people were asking, like, I put up that caption on one of my pictures, like, oh, ready to die. But it was like one of those things where, like, I entered the ring with this acceptance of, like, I'm ready to leave it all in here. I'm ready to go to war. That's what I remember I told you guys when I went to the corner. I'm like, guys, I'm ready to fight. Like, I'm ready to yeah. get into a fight. And I was ready to, like, I was ready for the damage that was coming my way. And, and then, so mentally, I knew right there, I'm like, we're yeah. good. We're good. I'm in a good zone, ready to go. Yeah. You know, I, people don't ever, they don't ever see that side of it like if you're not willing to get dude, maimed the, the fight, you're gonna the fight get fucked before up. us in i don't know if you remember remember how we got called up early on deck yeah that one guy sitting there hands wrapped ready yeah, to and go he bailed. and he bailed but hands wrapped ready to get called up and he's just like yeah i'm done i'm not doing it so it's like it's real man like yeah. the, the, no, the, it's the, a lot know? it's a lot of pressure and 
it is scary as fuck but, but the re- it's the reward is the best yeah man, it was right? definitely it was definitely it? a great feeling uh time to get back at it so yeah it, it was good that was good uh let's uh well that that how do you feel about um like your support system was a little bit different this time than from the last time you uh then you fought to because before, when you're doing five years ago you were on you didn't have coaches around you really you know i mean you're no, doing everything you're every self 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 coached um and, and you had your own little school and had, that, that was it right? yeah and that was it training there we started way back in the day cross training uh with joe elliott's gym i was doing a lot of actually um pro training down at claude patrick's gym claude mm-hmm. pa- claude patrick back then would have uh, pro days on sunday this was this was way back and then every sunday you'd have guys like will romero dennis purick um shane Talking campbell all an- like, animals yeah, yeah so we would and like james edward was he would he was one of the guys that would take us out there so we'd go out there every sunday and i was training with those guys so back then that was like you know i was really feeling some of the elite strikers who are still killing it now yeah um but other than that it was just um you know brad who is uh one of my best friends and he does a lot of managing for all of us he would always have my back with the cornering not that he was so detailed and everything that was going on but yeah. like he would at least be there and for me it's just about having somebody in my corner that i can trust that um will keep me calm and brad's always been there so that's why i called brad back to to yeah. be in the corner with us and take care of it yeah it's i just found for me the last time i got it it's like i had um it's nice to sit back and have other people tell you, kind of not tell you yeah. what to do, but like, I'm like, I, get, oh. I know how to set up training camps. I know how to train, yeah. but I'm like, okay, I know I'm, I'm going to your place on Monday. I'm going to Kendall's place on Tuesday. And like, say everything's kind of laid out for you and people were running the gym and like, and having people around you, like, you know, having, having an experienced corner man around you and people that you can trust and yeah. like, listen to I'm like, I found it made all the difference. In the oh, world, 100%, right? Like, well, Hey, you were the one behind everything. You were, you know, if, if, if people don't really know, but you're like, you're getting back into shape, you're going to to fight. Um, you check in on me every day and kind of tell me what I had to do. So we started, you know, um, a, just eating clean again was the first step. Shit's not hard. drinking. That was it's really hard. hard. <laughs> and then, you know, it was doing, getting back into my gym, hiring pad holders, training at our game every Tuesday, Thursday with you guys. Um, had Billy. Billy was working privates with me a couple days a week, doing some boxing with um, Colin Matcham. Yeah. And then having you look over everything and help me out. So I had, a, you know, I had a good support team behind me. And, you know, number one was a, like my wife. Like yeah, she let course. me, she let me go to Thailand to first, kickstart the camp and then when i told her i'm like i think i need to stay down here to focus um she's like okay do whatever you got to do so like that was the biggest one right and then yeah. all, all the guys that run the gym so i can dip out for yeah that, a was, while. that was the biggest thing for me too is the amount of support i got like just yeah. in here right everyone's like all right he's got a goal yeah you know but what we do you and i both do so much for so many other people that that's their way that they can give it back to you a little bit too right it's like yeah for sure dude, i'm not here handle my shit for me because i got a mission right so yeah. um yeah, so that yeah, that fight was uh that was the game plan. It went a little speedier than Yeah, well it's just like your fight, right? <laughs> I'm like, so yeah, for your fight, I remember I'm like, slow down, we're gonna take it easy, we're gonna feel him out a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe pick him apart round two, round three, and that went out the door. Yeah, right? I got one speed, man. Right? And it was the same it was the same thing for me. Like I wanted to get into a fight, like I wanted to get hit, but then I left, I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's maybe I don't want to get hit. It's right? it's hard to explain to people when you go in and do it because you made that guy look bad and you, you know what and, we, and he wasn't yeah, yeah and, and i know that's, that yeah that's the thing like i know the guy's had over 20 fights and he's 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 actively still fighting which was one of the things for me because i was like are you going to deal with ring rust you know there's one thing with how you're looking in the gym yeah and then it's like okay are you going to come back you're going to have that ring rust you're going to have that stage fright are you going to start swinging for the fences like you shouldn't um and you know I watched his last fight, so I knew what I was up against. I knew he had one weakness in his game, and that was my strength. So I'm like, this yeah. is a good matchup for me, right? And then, you know, I weigh in, too. Like, I was going through the motions. I'm like, fine, okay, yeah, he's, he's, he's big. big. Guy. He's big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a big guy. I'm like, yeah, he didn't look that big last time I saw him. And then, you yeah. know, I'm like, when we both weighed in at the same, I'm like, all right. Yeah, it well, doesn't matter now. Yeah, right? I looked at him. I'm like, hey, he's, he's in shape. Chop those legs. Yeah, right? for sure. So, it, was the, uh, yeah. it was a second kick. Like the first one hurt. First, yeah, first one he stood up, and then I the second one couple of hands, hard. and then the second one just that's all I was drilling though. Like my whole game plan was like you know cross hook, heavy low kick, and then jab, heavy low kick, and yeah. it w- worked. There was only five or six kicks, and but the setup for each was I think almost 
they were all different setups. You know what I mean? Yeah. He never, so he he couldn't he didn't have a chance to kick because nothing happened twice. You know what yeah. I mean? The kick was always the same, but like the hands were different. No, right? and, and he was a gamer, and that's like, man, like we're not here. Like I'm not here to make a comeback to go lion fights or fight with like what Matt Kendall and those guys are doing. Yeah. Like those guys are on the elite, in shape, ready to go. Like you know, we're running to a couple gyms and doing all this and that. Like we got like we got to pick the appropriate fight, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hey, if Rob Reed comes back, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah. pick the appropriate fight he doesn't have to go fight the best I mean, of the best it, but get back in there and show everybody you're a G I, I, I say this all the time it's like when you look back man it's just it's the fight that's the best part yeah. like it's the wins and the losses they come but it's the time while you're in there that's the best yeah. right that which it brings me back to like a couple minutes ago like that you made that fight look easy and you made that guy look yeah. bad but yeah. it wasn't the case like I wasn't a pud yeah. he, he, he didn't get a chance to get going because you cracked yeah. him right away yeah. but it's almost like afterwards when it happened, because I've had, I've had a, a KO a guy in yeah. 20 something seconds. It was my night and I landed one and he went to sleep, right? And afterwards you're kind of like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I want to do it again. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Almost disappointed. Like you yeah. got out there and busted a nut and it was over. Yeah. But then yeah. again, like part of like, like what we were talking about before and, and why I took a break was like, you know, we, we know guys like Jovan. I'm like, I don't want to end up like yeah, that. So yeah. how, how many wars do you want to be in? Yeah. Right. Cause like that was, that was part of it. Like, yeah, I've had tons of fights, but like all the real wars are in the gym yep. in training. And like, you know, I, I meet a lot of the older guys that have been doing it for a long time that have tied it up that are now hitting their fifties. Um, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't, I don't want to end up like that. I got to take care of my head. Right. So that yeah. was, you know, body, head, everything. Right. So I'm like, like Hey, dude, I really want to get punched in the head. No. So, Hey, we're no, good. Get it out of there. Yeah, maybe but we'll do it again. We'll, we'll see what happens. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's uh after party of the hospital. It's a routine, right? Always. Yeah, it's always the it. same thing. So and some nights, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pack a lunch, man. You gotta, yeah. st- you're in there for 15 minutes. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's 45 it's, seconds, right? Exactly. So you gotta take the good with the bad. It's just, there always is that feeling when it's done quick where you're like, oh, I want it more. I yeah. want it more. Always, but you got- always be ready for a war too. Yeah. That's like the one thing that I went into it. Like I was ready to bang for five rounds and you know go the distance and, and I was ready for a war. And I was like, we just had uh, this past weekend, I had some kids getting ready for a fight. And one of the moms had their kid training in the day. I'm like, they're fighting tonight. I'm like, they, they need to be wrestling. Oh, no. Well, the last fight was so easy. He's probably going to have an easy fight. I'm like, never plan on an easy fight. No, you man, never know who's coming. You never know who's coming to fight you. I'm like, and 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 what what they're what kind of shape they're going to be in ready to go, right? It's just one of those things, man. Always be ready for a war. Never overlook an opponent. Um, this is just the one piece of advice I can have. Oh, and they, if you give. underestimate that, that's, yeah. it's going to happen to you that night. Fuck, man. How yeah. often do you see it? Right. How often do you see it, man? It's it's uh, nuts. I, I uh, one of my favorite things to watch online. I, I watched like three times last day, last day. Was uh, was named uh, Adrian Broner versus uh, Pacquiao. No, he fights the uh, uh, the other little Mexican where he's just shit talking. Oh, my Donna. My Donna. Yeah. Oh, I hey, saw that. Uh, that clip with the right. He just shit talks yeah. him, and the whole time he's like out of a hip hop video, just looking like a fucking douchebag and being rude in the ring and. He put it on him so bad. It was just beautiful. And you watch him, like, Broner walks out of the ring, like, I think probably busted hands and everything yeah. else. And he's, like, that's what happened. When you yeah. act like that, that's I, what I happens. Hate, I hate the showboating. I really I do. It too. If anybody thinks me standing over my guy was showboating, too, yeah, like, no. That points. That was, you know, not only that, like, I, was, I didn't say nothing, didn't act anything. I just looked him in the eye and made him stand up. But it was one of those things where, like, if he did look up and he saw into my eye, he knew, like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Right? And I, It's, uh, that's also, like, you try to have to break that down for people yeah. who don't understand it. It's like, yeah, that's fucking, that's dominance. Yeah, right? I'm not. I'm not being a dick, man. I'm showing you that I'm the fucking man. You know why? Because yeah. I'm the fucking man. Yeah. Like, uh, like yeah. I'm here to break you. Yeah. Get up. Exactly. Get up. Exactly. I love making guys get up. Yeah. Because right? every yeah. time you do, they're like, yeah. it takes a little more out of them, a little more out of them. It's, it's hard to come back from. That's just, that's, that's strategy as well, right? People don't yeah. understand that, you know? It's, it's weird how people... If you're not involved in what we do, whether it's jiu-jitsu or... No, not fuck jiu-jitsu. Like, kickboxing, yeah. Thai boxing, MMA. Like, people have this thing where you just go in and punch each other and then it's over. Like, or, or brand new fighters or people I've done before. They yeah. think you're going to go... I'm going to go and punch you and you're going to fall over. Yeah, no. I'm like, if that's, <laughs> if that's your approach, then, then what if you... Like, you're going to lose. Yeah. That guy's here to fight. Would you fall over if he hit you? Yeah, right. If, if your answer is... Yes, then you're in the wrong game. Like, those guys go out ready to die, man. Mm-hmm. You don't just get to hit someone they stop moving. So I, I always explain it to my guys. I'm like, fucking land first. Land first, right? Yeah, it's they, for, always. that's what I say, too. Make them respect you right away. Yeah. And let them know that you're here to fight. You're in for a fight, right? And, like, give them that first shot right away and let them know. You're going to find out yeah. if they're going to move forward, go back, yeah. whatever kind of 
kind of man you're facing, right? Yeah. And uh, and yeah, when you're standing over someone, like you're letting them know you you mean business, yeah, right? You, and, and the the fans and the judges, whoever else, can they could take that any way they want to. Yeah. But I know I just drained your gas tank because you know I got a bigger dick than you. You know <laughs> what I mean? It, so yeah. for sure, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I just want to, to I tell you this shit all the yeah. time because I'm proud of you. But man, I just think about. How long have we been training together? Five or six years now? Oh, yeah, about six years, I'd say, yeah. I just remember you had a tiny little gym in yeah. Curtis, and now you have fucking two massive gyms in two different towns, and you're fucking crushing it, and your work ethic uh, just fucking blows me away. And I, so now I've sucked your dick. We've gotten out of the way. Like, <laughs> well, say, yeah. I, well, all hard, your hard work, man. That's, yeah, that's what I do. It's, it's no hard substitute. work. Like, I'm not the most talented guy around. Like, and I, I always said that, like, you know, I never fought George St. Pierre or anything, but I will work hard. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, and that's what I try to tell all my guys, like hard work will always pay off. You know, I don't, and I think too, is like, I don't ever go around acting like I know everything about everything. I'm not one of those guys, but I'll, you know, go to people to learn, um, and just create a good atmosphere and a good environment. But yeah, it's been a journey since we met in the small little gym. That's yeah, for sure. No, and I, and I walked come, in here. Come along. You definitely come a long way. Let's say like, I, you would like, that was, uh, you taken five years off was an opportunity to build your brand and your business yeah. and it's got that which has come a long way yeah. you know what i mean it's well, that was, like i met it was uh, nick stiglia actually he was the one who said he's like you know he's like if you want to have a successful gym you can't do both yeah. you either you either stick to competing and fighting at a high level or you run the business and at that time i'm like all right and then after the the, the one fight i'm like all right i'm gonna focus on the business and just go go all in because there wasn't any going back and there was you know you, you'll remember more than anybody but like there was a time i was ready to close the doors you know yeah. like and i li lived in the one gym for a good I think eight months I was living in there keeping it going so there was like my back was against the wall it's either like you do this or you're done yeah right? and I can yeah I can relate man because it is a fucking struggle no matter yeah. how well you think you're people think you're doing man it's hard like people see hundreds of people coming in over gyms yeah. I'm like like anything can happen yeah man. like yeah it's got its ups it's got its downs it's definitely i think fighting though um probably for you as well has made us like i don't know if it's like you're resilient or you're like but like i'm never willing to give up it's like mm -hmm. you're either gonna knock me out like in the business side of things too it's or like because i'm yeah. not just gonna quit as, as many times as things are forcing me to quit like even yeah. even during that whole camp like you know, I was going through stuff like, you know, have um, people looking into the after school program because someone called in and complained. We, we got a pass. Don't get me wrong. But like, you know, there's always things or audits, people trying to, you know, make the business harder for you to run. And it's it's challenging. But like, you know, just keep keep yeah. grinding forward and <laughs> yeah. killing it. it. Yeah, it's it's it is not as glorious as it looks, but there is nothing I wouldn't change the uh, lifestyle of having to be a fighter like for anything yeah. to travel and the cool and the stuff all the stuff that comes with it but the business side of it is really hard but still even being an entrepreneur like the freedom that comes with that is fucking yeah. amazing you're never really your phone's not off you're yeah, still working no. seven days a week yeah but, trust, trust me that's but, the problem i get my wife's like get off your phone I'm like man people are messaging me and like i have to get back to them yeah and like you know i would try to turn i've been trying to turn my phone off at night but like i'll have people message me all night just like man just like i can only imagine how many messages you get because you're like our therapist for yeah, many I get, many I get, people right i like, get all you guys yeah, right? yeah, like, so. he's, that's what i'm like who, like who helps justin because he's helping all of us like giving us all the advice and we're always going to him i'm like what do i do here oh, yeah, uh, what do i do here uh what's the situation here you're always helping us so thank you for that like if if not too many people know how much that uh justin or professor goes out of his way to like take care of us like he was messaging me every single day for two months of my camp making sure i was on point eating right doing this doing that and even now it's been two weeks after the fight you're like put the bottle down it's monday i'm like okay two weeks celebration we're, we're ready you know go. what though it's because i understand that um i understand that ride better than anyone yeah. i know i get it man i know how hard it is and our roots are almost exactly the same, right? As far as like, but I know what it's like to be a competitor and a fighter and a, like an, not a competitor, a fucking fighter. Yeah. Right. A prize fighter. And you got to, and you ride that big fucking wave. And then we're like, all right, I'm just going to party for like two days. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now it's like two weeks later, yeah. I'm a fat piece of shit again. Yeah, and whatever else. And, it, and like goes fast. physically and emotionally, it's the hardest ride. Right. Yeah. And you got to learn. I don't, I know guys who are really good at it, but. I've just never been like I crash so fucking hard when I'm done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the, how do you how do you, how do you get like and because you're celebrating it makes the crash even harder, right? And then yeah. you're well, like to the adrenaline dump of all the emotion and you know what I mean? Yeah. It comes was, like, that's what I was like, oh 
cold Corona is going to taste so good in oh, three yeah. months, in two <laughs> months, in one month. And then yeah. the fight's over. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, that was really good. Those are the one best ones night. when they're earned, yeah. right? They, yeah. It really, it's, it's true. But you got to... You got to put that shit down. Yeah, that's the discipline work, right? and the balance part of it too. So, Al's is not my jam, man. I've still not <laughs> fucking figured that out. You know, I it's uh yeah. A couple of weeks ago was 15 years. I'm like, how the fuck, man? I still feel feel like I don't know I, what I'm doing. Man, I, saw, I, I messaged you and I'm like, I don't know how you've been doing it for 15 years. Like, pr- props to you. It is like emotionally. <laughs> Like I can see how the business is running. Don't get me wrong, but like emotionally and it's like hard, how man. you keep it all together, like like props on you. Like I think I'm seven. I don't know how many years I am, but like fifteen years. I'm like that's and insane. The, the truth is, I is I don't I don't hold it all together. Yeah, I give the impression that I do, man, but it's fucking it is fucking draining, man. It's hard. Yeah. Like it is really hard. I don't know how. And I, and the people that uh, say I'm up here for all you guys and I spread all my love and my knowledge and whatever else, but the people who've really got to deal with me on a personal level, I'm like, dude, I don't even know why you're fucking. Around yeah, well, me, that's why, like, you know, everybody listening, like, and that's, you know, we need those higher ranks to step up and help us. Cause yeah. like, it's emotional and I get it. And it's just like, you know, I need you. So, <laughs> you know, no, you, like, you, you need no. to stick around. Cause I don't know who else is going to help me. Like, right? What the fuck else are we going to do, man? This, I, this I, got, I got three guys that help me or like that I look up to. And like, you're one of them, Nick Castiglia. And obviously my dad and you guys, uh, Your you guys dad. are my role model. So Keep doing what you guys are doing. Your dad is a goddamn animal, man. Yeah, he's it was, crazy. Eh? It was nice to meet your yeah, mom, Yeah, yeah, my mom was telling she was partying with you. Yeah, yeah, Tree, we, yeah. We, we got it done. She, so. she, she, she was like, I was up in Bruckman's room drinking whiskey. I was like, what? <laughs> For the record, I wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, right? Yeah, that was good. So uh, so what do you think? What's next? What are we, we going to do? Uh, I think we're going to go back to Thailand. Are, you, uh, you, are we going to go? Yes. If I you can... go to Thailand, then I will go with you. Is I, that, yeah. are, you are you asking me to be in your corner? Yes, I will please. go to Thailand with you then. I think we should do, I think, you know, we need to set another goal keep it going keep the momentum going yep. and uh let's go to thailand do my turn we'll do it over there i'll okay. try i'll try to ride it out for a couple of rounds <laughs> we'll see what happens listen jo- jovan, you can, jovan, he, jovan will steal our money and uh oh my god that guy. Go. he did, i don't think he intentionally no. stole my money He's not going to listen to this podcast. Right? So, <laughs> but, you know, he, so, he won't. We'll, we'll bet, so we'll back right? that story up. So, <laughs> oh, our okay. friend jo- Jovan, he set up, he set up the matchup for for me in Chiang Mai, right? Pretty yeah. much, and yeah. um, L- L- Taipei Stadium yeah. in Chiang Mai, yeah. which was amazing. You walked in. If you've seen pictures or my video of the fight, is we walked in. Brendan's like, we got to go check out the stadium early. Well, let's just start right here. The, yeah. f- the first person to greet us entering was this lady boy. Do you remember yes, that? Yes. So we'll start right yeah. there after we got through all the barbed yeah. wire and blood. Yeah. And okay. you walked in and all you could smell is Thai liniment and like dried blood. And I was like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the biggest heart on. I was like, oh, I fucking like that. Yeah. I'm like, it's nice to fight in these in. I've fought in front of like 10,000 people yeah. in big arenas and we're awesome. Like, but I don't need that. But I walked in this place and saw, yeah, actually like barbed wire and shit everywhere. It's like, yeah. fuck, and I am home. And it was pretty cool too. Like the ring's right in the middle and there's like literally it's just all bars right around it. So, and, and then you sit there and it's just like everybody sits at a bar, drinks and watches these guys just go yeah. to war. Like it, it was just cockfighting. Yeah. It was amazing. So anyway, remember you took the fight because we want, you wanted to, you're like, Hey, I want to do pro and everything. So I'm going to get paid. I just want to get my paycheck. I, it's all I wanted. Right. Yeah. And, uh, we, we do the, fu- we do the fight goes, goes great. <laughs> yeah. We walk up and it's funny because Joe Van was like, all right, we're going to go, we're going to go, well, we're going to do this and that. He's there with his buddy. And afterwards, like, I, like, I just want to sit down and have a beer for a couple minutes yeah. and then we'll decide what we're going to do. So we go and grab like the only table around yeah. sat outside and then we caught Joanne and he, and he's like, oh, we, you know, we just have, we really want to take off and get a long drive. I'm like, all right, later. Thanks for everything. He takes off. And then we're sitting there sipping on a fucking beautiful Thai beer. And I'm like, Brendan, did you get paid? He's like, <laughs> No, I'm like fuck, man. I forgot to get my money. <laughs> we messaged. And, him, and, I messaged Joe Van. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, hey, Joe Van, uh, how much did we get for that fight? He's, oh, sorry, bro. <laughs> I know. Said, sorry, bro. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I uh, 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 kept it, uh, in my, and I had to give some to my, my my buddy. And I'm just like, oh, we got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> and that was after. I was, I was after yeah, both it, of us. Yeah, not like it was like a crazy amount. Of, oh, it was probably like thirty thousands of dollars. Yeah, but it was just like thirty dollars. It was a fact that like, hey, we wanted to go. I just wanted to touch it. Say, hey, we we've now fought professionally as a tie fighter. You got your pay and we got well welcome to thailand <laughs> right, and that, was, to thailand. that was after like um, we both gave him money out of our pockets yeah, while we did yeah. when we got there they were nice guys too like here's some gas money thanks for thanks coming for down i you know here's money for the wraps going out of your way you know da, da, da. We're, we're nice guys we're gonna help our guys out right yeah and yeah yeah, yeah. If that fight probably cost me and bless everyone because yeah. so many yeah. people help support us and raise money that co- fight probably cost like 
twelve thousand dollars to do oh it's insane and yeah the yeah. paycheck was probably 30 bucks but like that's where <laughs> like the best part about going there is you don't know who you're fighting yeah and that's what i like about it like here's your weight here's 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 the experience here's what we're gonna do here's my name and like it's pretty easy to look you up and know you're legit so yeah, they, they, they and yeah. so we show up there not knowing who you're gonna fight and that's what i said about always being ready for a war that was for me the best part it's like who are we fighting yeah, like, I was. We looking, don't know who. I was gonna, looking around the ring, and yeah. I'm like, I'm like, he's the biggest guy. I guess yeah. it's him. Yeah, man. And then you're, you, I remember you saying to me, like, listen, this guy looks like a kid, but he's coming to fucking kill you. I'm like, no problem, I got this. Yeah. Right? And well, dude, he was, I think, well, he was undefeated, and I think his last seven fights were all by knockout, and he was the the champ yeah. of that stadium. Yeah. Right. And so it's like we're not we're not up here against an easy fight, and like, nah. be ready to go. What? Well, it he was the world's tallest tie too. He was like, <laughs> fucking, but everyone's yeah. like, it, it, uh, people were saying like how. Like, how big is that guy? I'm like, fuck that, man. We, like, we picked a weight. Yeah. Well, that's the... That yeah, was it. Yeah, that's... Well, ties, you're not going to get so many ties, like, at a, at a big, big weight. You're going to, you know, kind of get what you get. And you get the biggest one, and he was the biggest one there. Yeah, he was a tall kid with big yeah. old legs, and he he kicked me really hard. And I was like, yeah, I, I remember you couldn't I, walk for about five days. You were limping on the one side. I don't, there. I don't like this. <laughs> we're going head on. <laughs> and I got him in the corner. He was tied up on the ropes, and I sucker punched him, and that was it. So, yeah, so Thailand's got crazy stories, and uh, you oh, know, awesome. getting ripped off by our coach was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, we'll go back. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll yeah. see if he settles up this time. <laughs> right? I just wanted uh, to buy some beer after. I know. That was it. I know. Uh, man, that was the greatest adventure of my life, man. Like, yeah. And it wasn't, yeah, if we didn't start training, it never would have happened. I was like, that was, that was an adventure. Yeah. So it, it, not too many people know, but like, um, so we had three parts of the trip planned. Yeah. And I had no idea where we were going to next, which was, so if you're listening, basically what <laughs> happened, what happened was we knew we were going there to fight and then we were going to spend uh, a week, you know, traveling around, checking out the sites. And literally I had no idea we were going to be ending up in Cambodia. We show up to the airport. I'm like, where are we going boys? Don't worry. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Give my passport. Cambodia. I'm like, we're going to Cambodia. <laughs> that was, that was, that was then, amazing. That was the best trip ever. Oh, the Cambodia was beautiful, man. Yeah. Just, I liked it. I, uh, Phuket, I was like, well, that was, I was the, that was the tail end of our yeah, trip. Yeah, we were too. already done by yeah. that too, right? But Cambodia was so nice and laid Be- back, beautiful. man. It was in the cheap and friendly. It was a wicked place. Yeah. I look forward to some different journeys over there. It was good. Yeah. yeah, one of the best times of my life, man. It was fucking fantastic. Yeah. So I, it was good just to go through all the emotions of the seeing you fight. That was one of the most beautiful things for me. I know a lot of people saw saw you fight here once or twice the, at Rec. That was amazing. Yeah, that was we got to see that. And, you know, seeing it there was just, that was a ride. That was awesome. Oh, no, yeah, we had was, a good time. Yeah, it was amazing. I look for I don't look forward to that flight, but yeah. that flight home was bad, man. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. six hours of turbulence at, at Asia. It was fucking, I hate flying. Yeah. Fuck. I don't Fuck. I don't mind the flight. Like, I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind the flight at all. Mm, well, you've done it enough times. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens next. So. I don't mind the, fi- the flight going when I'm coaching because I can have some cocktails before. Yeah. But if I'm going there training and I'm in shape, I'm like, all right, this sucks. This yeah. is too long, right? This, dude, it's <laughs> forever. And it's when you, cha- when you cross that many time zones, it's like you're in a time warp too because you, yeah. you get off the plane like the same time as... Well, we celebrate. We celebrated New Year's twice. Remember that? Yes, we, we, we did. <laughs> we, ce- we celebrated New Year's there, yeah. which was amazing. That was the best New Year's I've ever had in my life. Yeah, that was wild. And then we woke up and did it again in the afternoon to celebrate with everybody here. So the, the time change was pretty cool yeah, for was, that. Was, right? It's a weird flight into Cambodia. That's yeah, for sure. Definitely. So, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a fucking great adventure. I look forward to a, a bit more. So. Uh, what do we got coming up? We got the Oshawa, sorry, so uh, Ontario Open is this weekend. Yeah. We have a massive fucking team this year. I don't know. I haven't checked the how many people we actually have in, but we must There's have. There's tons. I, I, well, I looked at the list like maybe a month ago, and there was a ton on there. Yeah. So <clears throat> We had about, a. I think we were just shy of 100 last year. Well, it's so. good to see what kind of like um, the godfather here has kind of organized with all the teams working together. It's just, you know, every weekend clubs getting together, cross-training. I think it's good for the competitive side of, of our um, jiu-jitsu team. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens this weekend. It's going to yeah. be a good weekend, win, lose, or draw. Like, this is the biggest tournament for jiu-jitsu in Ontario, yeah, if be, not Canada, right? Like, yeah, this, in Canada, there's nothing even this close. Is, this is the biggest tournament. So, you know, like, if, if you're listening ahead of time, I don't know when this is going to come out, but, exactly. like, or if it comes out tonight, like, if you're listening, man, just just getting on the mats and competing is is a win. You know, don't worry about, especially if you're a kid or a parent, don't worry about your kids getting up there first, second, or third. Like, the, the level is insane. Yeah. If your kids are getting out there and they're they're competitive for a match, man, be proud of them. Give them a high five. Yeah. You know, that's I, just my advice, too, I, like, ahead of time. Don't, don't be that, you know, don't get upset if you're not placing at a tournament like this. Like, our kids are going to do great, don't get me wrong, but, like, the level here is going to be bigger than all very, the other tournaments. Very high. And it's just... 
it's important for everyone to get out of your comfort zone go test yourself and be under pressure right yeah. and my my biggest problem with parents i don't have it too bad here but they think their kids don't get on the podium and they think there's something wrong i'm like yeah. you know what i mean or like you know the or the coaching or this or that or there's always i'm like oh, your kid, the other kid was better than your kid yeah get on the that, mats test it. yourself see how you handle adversity yeah and the same thing like you know get out of your comfort zone like that's why i'm here like i'm not a huge podcast guy like i know everyone's gonna watch like i was nervous like i didn't i'm like uh, how about episode 100 justin he's like <laughs> he's like 100 is taken by biz yeah he requested him like, he, he picked 52 or something right? yeah. and i'm like okay well, what about a little later and, and then just get it done then he drives down to south carolina pick me up and he's like hey well i'm like okay i'll do one but so, hey, so, straight, so well, anybody that's listening that there's a lot of guys that i want to listen to that are your friends that that might be a little nervous about coming on just you know Overcome that adversary. Get out here and, and speak, man. You I was know, telling. I'm was, here, so you can do it. Yeah, I was on your podcast, man. That was yeah. That's yeah, right. So yeah. I I was. I think I was telling you this the other day. I've, I've never. I don't think I've ever actually even listened to a podcast before. I just listened like, to all <laughs> yours. They're good. I was yeah, on yours, yeah, and yeah. I was like, I can do this. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. So here we yeah, are. You man. don't got to listen to host. You just got to host, right? Yeah, that's it, man. So yeah, um, fuck yeah. Well, how where are we at? Uh, about 35 minutes. One thing you guys didn't touch on and that uh, I was a little curious about. In your yeah. fight, there was a knockdown, and then the ref kind of stepped in, and there was a little bit, like, I don't know if you hit him when... So, yeah, there's a little bit of it. Like, okay, so the ref should have got in there and pulled me back, but, like, I think back to, like, Bro uh, Brockman gave me shit years ago. It was one of my fights in Michigan, and I took the guy down... This was an MMA fight. And then I walked back and I let him back up. He's like, you never fucking let him up. You start kicking his fucking legs. And that was one of the things. So then when I was there and he went down, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to finish. Okay. And it's, you know, at, and then when the ref backed me up, he's, I'm like, ref, it's your job to protect him. And I'm like, you get in there and tell me to back up or else I'm just going to like keep going. Like, cause he, he, I hit him with the one kick. He hit his knee. He went down. Then he came back up a bit. So I'm like, yeah. yeah finish it right yeah. and i was in the middle of a good combo and you know i told the ref i'm like it's your job to get in there man be on point right? yeah because like sure you know you know protect yourself at all times like you know he could have clinched on or done whatever but that's what i told the ref i'm like it's your job man yeah. not mine you see know. the referees in thailand they're like fucking almost in the middle of it yeah you know oh, what yeah. i mean they're and when you do, the difference yeah. in thailand too is like they're not there to protect you from each other they're there to fucking make you fight if you back off you're losing right yeah. they're like fight Fight, yeah, well, there's fight, that one fight. highlight that came out uh, before that one ref get in there and he took that big head kick, yeah. knocked out. Like, it's a dangerous little gig for those guys. Yeah, for sure. Right? <clears throat> but, but I remember you let that guy up. I'm like, listen, he's going to get up anyway. Yeah. And the ref, if you want him up, just kick him until the ref stops the fight and then you let, yeah. and then let him up. That's yeah. the whole point. Like, don't let him, never let anyone off the hook, right? Yeah. Create damage and score points whenever you can. If you want the fight standing, kick his legs. Eventually, the fucking ref will get tired of it and make yeah. you stand anyway. So you might as well get a couple free shots in while sure. you can, right? And protect yourself at all times, man. That's it, man. Keep I, your hands I, up. Uh, I, I'm going to fucking hit you until the ref jumps on me or, or someone stops moving. Like, that's just it, man. I don't yeah. fucking care. Like, we signed an, an agreement and we're fucking getting it done. That's it. Right? So, fuck them. It's the same thing. I, if I'm in the gym and someone tells me you got to fucking do this for a minute, I'm doing it for a minute and 10. Right? Because that's the shit I put in my head. Or if someone says, dude, lift this 10 times, I'm doing it 12. Because I'm going to do the extra fucking 10 seconds or two reps at this guy's not thinking about it. Yeah. You, think, you think I'm stopping at 10? Yeah. Fucking shit, get no, your hands that was, up. That, yeah, that was part of it too. Like I went in that fight knowing he didn't work as hard as me for that. Yeah. And that was, that was part of the mental mental prep or focus that I had for that, which was really good. So well, we're going to do it again. We're going to go to Thailand then. Can I set yeah. something up? Uh, what do you think? When do you want to go? Do I get a choice? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Let's do it. We got one more in us. All right. One more. Whatever you want, dude. One I'm more. down for it. You know me, man. I'll show <clears> up wherever you, wherever you, wherever you want to fucking go. So I literally just drove fucking like six, I appreciate 16 that. 16 I hours. You're like, I'm like I'm gonna check out an Uber so yeah, he's like I'm coming I'll pick you up like, yeah, sweet man Thank <laughs> you. honestly it was perfect timing yeah. and Charleston was beautiful oh, man. so, man. We, so yeah. I decided to stay down there cause like uh, I've been watching the uh, one of the gym owners there Jeff Grady yeah. the, the guy's what gym nice went dude. to Charleston Muay Thai I was watching him for the last three four years just on social media and like how passionate he was and then you know I remember when I was in Myrtle Beach I flew down there to corner my guys and I'm like I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check this guy's out this guy's gym and stay there and he was just awesome but charleston was a beautiful beautiful city so if you haven't been there like i loved it man the weather was beautiful the people were super friendly yeah it's different than i thought it was gonna be yeah really had a good time there i'll definitely we'll definitely be going back there yeah i just like man i i like driving man so yeah. i was like 16 hours we'll do that on my head and as soon yeah. as it starts to get warm or see, you I, see I that hate, first i hate long drives oh, I, I love hate it long man drives. i like that you see that first palm tree and you're like fuck yeah, yeah. it was it was a beautiful spot i went jogging and rode my bike it was a fucking great great place I, and well you're yeah, good dj friend. too that that helped yeah. that helped he definitely has I a good taste in music i got shit under control so that was all right but, but, uh, I, but even the drive up to 
Washington. Washington it was nice, man. Yeah, that, that was good because we did have beautiful weather, which was nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I almost did kill a man in Washington. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait, not, you said that on your last podcast, and I don't think people realize. Like, I was, no, I actually killed, almost killed I know, a guy. Because I was sitting there, I'm like, we could have been in real big shit because people Fuck would yeah. have thought that would have been like a terrorist attack. Yeah. Because we're literally, there's the White House, and here we go through a crosswalk with people walking. I'm like, yeah. holy shit. And there's shit. guys with guns and fucking yeah. men in black this, everywhere. And then there's, the, I think we we left, and then somebody lit themselves yeah. on fire. Right, almost yeah. right where we were <laughs> took our selfie. Yeah. Like right, right there. Some holy guy, shit, we were there, and there's some crazies. We got out of there in the nick of time. Oh, man, right? that world is weird. It's Washington is so weird. You could feel yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really like Washington. No. Well, I, wasn't, it, I wasn't a huge fan, other than our waiter was good. Yeah. Uh, Charles, <laughs> Charles? Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Carlton. Carlton. Yeah, yeah, Carlton. I was he waiting was, to break out and dance. Yeah, that was interesting. We got yelled at by some lady sitting at the bar about what we were watching on TV. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Washington. Charleston it, was beautiful. I, I've been before, and it's a really rad city. You just got to yeah. stay in a certain section because it is rough. Like, yeah. out there's, it's like notorious for the for, for the, the White House and all the monuments, stuff like that. But outside of that, Washington's like dodgy yeah, shit. Yeah. Really scary. But I had a great time there before. Like, some really nice neighborhoods and food and music is wicked but we were in and out of there so fast right and yeah. then uh vintage speed metal speed metal shows up yeah what jumps a, in the jumps in the beauty. car with us and yeah. drives home so i don't think you knew how long the drive was no, no. we all come down to meet you and then now we got a six hour road trip but hey love that guy, love that guy. <laughs> <clears throat> fool yeah, yeah it was uh it was it, that whole journey was just fantastic and well, i appreciate just, you being there for all of it and just, and, and setting it up and making sure I, I did it right. I, that's what I told you. I'm like, I said I was gonna do it. I'm gonna walk the walk. I'm not just gonna be like, yeah, I'll get in there again. Just make, you know, be a man of your word and well, man, walk it's the easy. walk, man. Just it, do it. It's easy for shit to <clears throat> if people come up with a plan, and it's easy to get sidetracked with real life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And shit happens, and people yeah. make excuses and don't compromise. Oh, there's or whatever. Else that's, that's like there was. A, I could have quit for a million different reasons, and you yeah. knew that. Like some of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, I'm like, I could have called it a day and and canceled that. And man, the fight was pulled. The week yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, that was right. Too. Remember, then, uh, yeah, I was then, like, "Holy fuck!" Like, so I went through every emotion. Like, fight got scratched the week of. I'm like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me!" And there's a million other reasons. Like, <clears throat> a, a month or two before that, I I could have just pulled out for and told anybody. Anybody I'm like, "Yeah, that makes sense." You know, you could have pulled out, but no, you know, man up and how get did it that done. guy end up I, back in? Because uh, I guess he was he was medically suspended up until well the fight was on the thirteenth so his medical suspension ended on the eleventh mm. or sorry no on the four the fourteenth or fifteenth two days after our fight was supposed to happen so they went back to the sanctioning body <clears throat> and because it was the same week they waived it so they'll say hey your your medical suspension is that week so we'll let it go right, even though it's right. two days later so right. it was good well he didn't really take any punches in the head so no so I think he only yeah. took took one or something like that yeah. I can't remember. He only got one off on you, and it was in the chest or something yeah, like that. Yeah, some sort of weird scissor kick he tried, but he was he was broken. He was looking for a way out, so yeah, well, I think we gave it to him. Yeah, he was broken. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I just the second kick, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> threw up my mouth a little bit. Yeah, well, that's why, like, I knew when it was like, you know, no shins, no elbow pads, nothing. I'm like, this is perfect. This is exactly uh, what I wanted, right? So. Everyone needs to know what a shin on shin or like real shin in the meat feels like. It's yeah. not pleasant no, at not, all. Not, man. A, not at all. Because it changed even just like. Even with the cloth shin guards, like you, as soon as you take that quarter inch of cloth on, man, like it's a different world. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Like people have no idea because you never. But check a kick for real, man. Yeah, it's yeah. not. It's not cool. Yeah, so we'll do it in Thailand. I think we'll do. Uh, you know, I'll, we'll message Joe Van see if he wants to steal a couple bucks. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll I'm get, in. I'm in. You we'll, just we'll pick. You pick. You pick the date. I think and so. I'll, gives us. Gives me a goal. Keeps me in shape and keeps me right. training with. Uh, Keeps me training with the guys, so. Yeah, all right. Well, you let me know the date, and I will clear my schedule. Fuck my, yeah. my busy, busy schedule of podcasting. Hey, podcast's going good. I've listened to everyone. So. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, Big we, fan. We love it. We love yeah. it, man. It's so much. It's so much fun. So, I uh, know. I think I'm. Uh, I'm about. I'm. But for me personally, I don't think we can talk about anything else on air. No, we have to keep it. Uh, we'll just. Yeah, I think yeah, we did a good job. Going to leave we'll it. Leave right. We got. We're professionals, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. Sure. Uh, so. Guys, listen up. Be like crew B, man. Work hard, set goals, get shit done. That's Come it. to the Ontario Open this weekend. Represent your team, your city. And uh, fuck, it's, uh, it's going to be a good week. This It's only Monday, and I feel this happy. Fuck Thank, yeah. Thanks, B. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for coming. All good? Yeah, All right, man. thanks for listening, everybody. Boom. Cheers.